Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III, a high-end mirrorless camera aimed at photographers and videographers who value speed, robustness, and portability. It has a 20 megapixel 4 3 sensor, films 4K video up to 30p, has built-in stabilization with up to 7.5 stops of compensation, and will fire 18 frames per second bursts with autofocus, and that's all packed into a tough, weatherproof body that costs around 1600 British pounds. Announced in February 2020, it comes three and a half years after the EM1 Mark II, which Olympus will continue to sell alongside the new model at a reduced price of £1,300. I'll link to updated pricing and US pricing in the comments and description below. With last year's EM1X occupying the top spot in the OMD range, the EM1 Mark III now sits between it and the more consumer-oriented EM5 series, but still aims high by sharing many features with the flagship. That said, since many of the EM1X's features were already inherited from the earlier EM1 Mark II, the new Mark III model represents a fairly mild update over its predecessor. I had a chance to try out an initial production version of the camera, so the performance, quality and features should be close to or even the same as final production samples. As always, this is my first looks report, which I'll follow up with a much more detailed in-depth review once I've had a chance to spend more time with the camera. And when this final review is ready, I'll add a link to it here. Here's the new EM1 Mark III on the right with the previous Mark II on the left and the similarities go more than skin deep. The Mark III shares the same sensor, viewfinder, screen, burst speed, movie quality, card slots, battery, and essentially the same body as its predecessor. The Mark III does, however, inherit the improved shutter mechanism and stabilisation unit of the EM1X, allowing it to offer the handheld high-res mode of the flagship. While a new image processor not only supports the live ND feature of the EM1X, but the best face and eye detection in the series to date. There's also a new starry sky mode that claims to autofocus on stars, as well as Bluetooth, charging or power delivery over USB, and an AF joystick that were all notably absent from the Mark II. And while there's still no 4K above 30p, the EM1 Mark III does at least offer auto ISO in manual movie exposures, as well as 1080 at 120p and OM log for grading. Okay, now let's get into more detail. As you've already seen, the EM1 Mark III shares essentially the same body and controls as the Mark II, but since it all worked so well on that model, I'm not complaining. So on the upper left hand side you have the drive, flash, focus and metering buttons with a power switch styled to look like a retro film rewind lever. Meanwhile on the right side the EM1 Mark III gets the mode dial from the EM1X which swaps the art filter and auto positions for a fourth custom mode and a dedicated bulb position. This provides easier access to the innovative live composite, live bulb and live time options. The art filters are still available on this model but you get them through the menus. In terms of exposure control, there's still satisfyingly large and tactile dials for your thumb and finger, although the latter is now a little clickier than before. Turning to the rear, Mark II owners will also notice the earlier AF area button has now been switched into a dedicated one for ISO sensitivity. This is because the AF button has now become redundant thanks to the long overdue addition of an AF joystick, a control that was sorely missing on the Mark II. As before, you can use the touchscreen to reposition the AF area, but there's nothing like doing it by pushing the joystick around, and it's one of the most important physical upgrades here. The Mark III shares the same viewfinder as its predecessor, an LCD panel with 2.36 million dots and 074 times magnification. The EM1X uses the same panel, but with a larger magnification. This relatively modest resolution is at odds with the rest of the industry which has adopted higher contrast OLED panels with noticeably higher resolutions too. But Olympus has stuck with this LCD panel as it reckons it's the best option for delivering 120 frames per second with progressive scan. This allows it to maintain detail on moving subjects with continuous autofocus when some rival technologies often reduce their detail when continuously autofocusing. I'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons for my final review. Olympus is stuck with the same screen too, so the Mark III inherits the 3-inch, 3 3x2 3 shaped touch panel with 1037K dots that can twist and flip in any direction. I personally prefer these side hinge screens, as while they're slower and less discreet to fold out than one that just tilts vertically, you're able to compose comfortably at high or low angles whether you're shooting in the landscape or portrait orientation. Plus, you can face it forward for vlogging without it being blocked by a tripod or a hot shoe mounted accessory. 
The user interface is essentially the same as before, but Olympus has added an alternative view for the super control panel if desired. So if the original view was too intimidating with its wealth of detail, you can now swap it for a simpler version, or swap back again if you prefer. The Mark III inherits the twin SD card slots of its predecessor, and the technology behind them is the same, which means only one of them will exploit the extra speed of UHS-2 cards. This is a bit disappointing, with Olympus explaining the board they use with twin UHS-2 slots for the EM1X was too large to fit into the EM1 body. That said, Fujifilm uses a smaller board with twin UHS-2 slots on the X-T3, but again using this would require a redesigned body. The bottom line is you're unlikely to notice this restriction unless you're recording large bursts to both cards simultaneously, in which case the buffer may reduce and be slower to clear. The selection of ports also remain the same as the Mark II with USB-C, micro HDMI, microphone and headphone jacks, although in a useful upgrade over its predecessor, the Mark III can now be powered or charged over USB, so long as the source conforms to the USB power delivery specification. The battery is also the same as before, but to be fair, the Mark II sported one of the first really high capacity packs for mirrorless cameras, so it still works well here. The Mark III body can also be fitted with the same HLD9 battery grip as the Mark II, accommodating an extra pack to double the life, while also providing portrait controls, albeit without the duplicate AF joystick. Like all Olympus mirrorless cameras, the EM1 Mark III uses the Micro Four Thirds system, providing access to one of the broadest catalogues of native mirrorless lenses around, and Olympus also introduced a new 12-45mm f4 zoom alongside it. At the heart of the Mark III lies the same 20 megapixel sensor, which made its debut on the Mark II three and a half years earlier. Following the EM1X and EM5 Mark III, this makes it the fourth Olympus camera to use the sensor, which sports 121 embedded cross-type phase detect AF points, giving it an advantage when it comes to continuous autofocus over its Micro Four Thirds partner Panasonic. Olympus has partnered it with a brand new image processor in the Mark III, the True Pic 9, but in terms of image quality when shooting normally, it's essentially the same as the Mark II. Now, like many of you, I'm always hoping for a new sensor that'll deliver better quality without compromise, and you may be disappointed to learn that EM1 Mark III stands still in this regard. But equally, you have to ask yourself if you're already satisfied by the output from the sensor. Personally speaking, I'm happy with the photo quality, especially when coupled with the feature set of the body, but there's no getting away from the fact that most of its rivals, at this price point, are likely to employ new or at least more recent sensors. Plus, if the EM1 follows the schedule of the previous two models, you'll not see a new sensor in this series until 2023. With the same sensor, the EM1 Mark III also inherits the same core autofocus system of its predecessor, which differs from most embedded phase detect AF systems by defining them all as more accurate cross-type sensors. As before, it's quick and accurate whether focusing on static subjects or those in quick motion. Now, Olympus hasn't equipped the Mark III with the vehicle object tracking of the EM1X, perhaps due to its processor speed or the market positioning, but TruePic 9 does boast the best face and eye detection from the company to date, recognising them from further away or when they're more in profile, and you can tap or toggle between multiple faces. Burst shooting is also inherited from the Mark II, which is fine as it was already fast enough. So, if you need continuous autofocus, you can shoot at up to 10 frames per second with the mechanical shutter, or 18 frames per second with the electronic shutter. And if you're happy with fixed focus, you can accelerate them to 15 frames per second mechanical, or 60 frames per second electronic, and the electronic shutter does fire completely silently. Here's how the mechanical shutter sounds at 10 frames per second, where you get continuous autofocus and now at 15 frames per second with fixed focus. It's pretty quiet, and with the mechanism inherited from the EM1X, it's now rated twice as long as the Mark II, now at 400,000 actuations. Like the Mark II, the optional Pro Capture mode uses the electronic shutter to keep a rolling buffer of the last couple of seconds, ensuring you never miss a moment when you do fully push the shutter. The Mark III can now buffer up to 35 frames in JPEG or RAW, comfortably more than the Mark II allowed, which works out at about 2 seconds worth of action if you're using the 18 frames per second shutter with continuous autofocus. It's ideal for grabbing the moment a bird takes flight. The Mark III also inherits focus bracketing, as well as in-camera focus stacking, although it doubles the number of frames in the stacking mode to 15, making it much more practical. Here's a couple of examples of final focus stacked images generated in camera. And thanks to the broader number of frames captured in this mode, you may not actually need to do a conventional bracket and external composite for less demanding situations. 
The highlight of any Olympus body remains the built-in stabilization, and by inheriting the latest unit from the EM1X, the Mark III boasts up to a staggering seven stops of compensation with unstabilized lenses, or seven and a half when using a Sync IS lens like the 12-100mm Pro. It's not just invaluable for hand-holding unusually slow shutter speeds, but also useful for steadying the image when composing. Here's the view when composing with the 12 to 40 at 40 mm first with stabilization disabled, and now with stabilization enabled, and the difference is pretty evident. The Olympus stabilization remains the best in the business, and on the EM1X, which shares the same system, it allowed me to handhold exposures up to 8 seconds with a 17 mm lens. The presence of the EM1X is improved stabilization, coupled with the new image processor, allows the EM1 Mark III to also support the handheld high res shot of the flagship body. Like the earlier Mark II, high res shot takes 8 images, subtly shifting the sensor between each before generating a composite photo in camera with potentially high resolution, up to 80 megapixels worth of detail when using a tripod. The EM1X and now the EM1 Mark III also offer a new handheld version which claims up to 50 megapixels worth of detail. I'll put it to test more thoroughly in my final review, but for now I'll show you a couple of quick tests I made with the Mark III. First, here's a normal 20 megapixel still image, and now one taken with the handheld high res shot mode. Now, here's a second example. First, again with the 20 megapixel single frame, and now the handheld high res shot version. I'd say there's definitely a little more detail in the high res versions, although, like all composite modes, anything that's in motion can cause artifacts. As such, it's best used for still life, archive or architectural work, but the ability to now do it handheld makes it much more convenient. Oh, and before moving on to video, the EM13's new processor also allows it to offer the live ND modes introduced on the EM1X, which simulate the use of neutral density filters for smoothing and long exposures. Check out my EM1X review to see this in practice. Ok, now for video and with the same sensor as previous models, it's not surprising to find the EM1 Mark III inheriting the same core capabilities. As such, you can film 4K UHD at 24-30p, Cinema 4K in 24p only, and 1080 up to 60p all uncropped. The EM1 III also now gives you high speed 1080 up to 120p, as well as OM log for grading, and auto ISO in manual exposure mode. The Olympus Workspace software also lets you synchronize high resolution audio files captured with the optional LSP4 sound recorder. But as an older sensor, the EM1 Mark III can't magically now offer 4K above 30p, a feature that's likely to become more common during its lifespan. But again, as always, you have to ask yourself if you really need it, while balancing its absence against the other benefits like industry leading weatherproofing and stabilization. Like other cameras with phase detect autofocus, the EM1 Mark III can easily adjust its focus smoothly and confidently. Here I'm pulling focus in 4K using the touch screen. The built in stabilization also allows you to handhold video very effectively, which could eliminate the need for a gimbal depending on the circumstances. All the examples I'm showing you here are sensor shift only without the optional digital image stabilization, and they were all filmed with the Mark III body. Even when walking with the camera, the stabilization is very effective, and new to the Mark III is the ability to vary the strength of the stabilization for movies. As most of you know, it's also a very effective system when you're facing the camera, so here's a quick vlog in 4K exploiting the stabilization, the flip screen, and face detect autofocus. For audio in this next clip, I connected my Rode Wireless Go. Hello, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is a quick vlogging test with the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III. I've gone deep into the African rainforest to bring you this test, or at least into the botanical gardens at Kew in London. Now the EM1 Mark III inherits most of the video capabilities of the EM1X, so there's no real surprises here. Still no 4K at 50 or 60p, but you do get 4K UHD at 24, 25 or 30p. You also get Cinema 4K, 1080 at a variety of frame rates, including 120 frames per second for slow motion. You get Olympus's best stabilization system inherited from the EM1X. That gives you seven stops of stabilization just with the sensor shift unit. And that's what I'm using now. Now you can apply additional digital stabilization, but this is just sensor shift. And it does a pretty good job, doesn't it? This is filming with the Olympus Pro 12 to 40 millimeter F2.8 at 12 mil F2.8. I have face detection and continuous autofocus enabled. 
The EM1 Mark III also supports auto ISO in manual. Thank you very much. And I'm using that now so that I can lock the shutter speed and the aperture and let the camera work out what ISO it should be filming at. You also get OM log if you want to grade later on. Okay, that's it for this vlogging test. Now on with the rest of the video. The Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III may represent a mild update of its predecessor, but given the Mark II was one of the most capable, feature-packed models of the last few years, that's no bad thing. As such, you're getting a camera that's tougher than most, with great ergonomics, the best stabilisation in the business, autofocus and burst shooting that's ideal for sports and wildlife, decent video and good photo quality straight out of camera. Indeed, looking back at my EM1 Mark II review, the Mark III successfully addresses the handful of annoyances I had with the earlier model. Things like the addition of an AF joystick, USB power delivery and charging, Bluetooth for easier wireless, better face and eye detection, as well as 1080 at 120p, auto ISO and OM log for movies. Now, no one complained about the stabilisation before, but it's now even better, which, coupled with the new faster image processor, also allows the Mark III to support the handheld high-res shot and live ND features of the EM1X. In fact, the EM1 Mark III could be described as a mini EM1X, with the flagship body only really offering the built-in portrait grip with twin joysticks, dual batteries, bigger viewfinder, dual UHS-2 slots and vehicle object recognition above and beyond the Mark III. In that respect, the Mark III looks pretty strong, but coming from the other direction, there's no getting away from the fact it's not hugely different from the earlier Mark II. If you can live without the AF joystick, USB charging, Bluetooth or 1080 at 120p, if you're happy using high-res shot on a tripod and find the stabilisation and face detection already good enough, then you would still probably be very satisfied by the Mark II. Now Olympus realises the similarities and is keeping the Mark II on sale alongside the Mark III at £300 less, so do you think the upgrades are worth paying the extra? Arguably a bigger issue for the Mark III though is the sensor, which at three and a half years old at the time of launch can't help but lack some of the capabilities of new arrivals, most notably not having 4K above 30p. Now, every time a new camera comes out with an existing sensor, there's always complaints. So the question you have to ask yourself is whether the photo and video quality will be good enough for you during the life of the product. Personally speaking, I have a camera with 4K 60p and rarely actually use it above 30p. And in terms of image quality, autofocus and burst speed, I'm perfectly happy with the performance from the Olympus sensor. But your mileage may of course vary and you may also prefer the benefits of a bigger sensor. Personally, I'm actually more annoyed there's no upgrade to the viewfinder and more than a bit disappointed there's not two UHS-2 card slots. Ultimately, everyone wants something different from their camera and while the Mark III definitely improves a body I already liked a lot, I do wonder how many people would be sufficiently satisfied by the earlier Mark II. Plus, anyone investing in a new camera this year should keep a very close eye on rivals. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll see my hands-on previews of all the new cameras as soon as they're announced. No rumours or speculation here, just the facts having actually used the products in person. Right, that's it for this first looks review. If you found any of it useful, you can support me with a follow. And if you really liked it, you could treat me to a coffee or treat yourself to some tasty Camera Labs merchandise, which now includes a new mug, or by grabbing a copy of my in-camera photography book. Links to everything, including the latest pricing below. So do let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.